Um, thank you for participating in this uh, webinar. Uh, this Zoom is part of our ongoing outreach effort uh, to the business community. Um, today we're focused on office space managers and tenants. And we realize there's a high level of eagerness to open up the economy. And we want to share relevant information that we have here at the city um, to support you. Uh, when we scheduled this last week, we were hoping that there'd be uh, some more information to provide, and it uh, turns out uh, we um, did get lucky on that front. Um, as of last night, um, uh, there is an updated announcement at the state and county level um, to allow us to op partially open office uh, space, so that's great news. Um, we want to make sure that we communicate the specifics that uh, go along with that partial reopening. Uh, but also just reinforce uh, that th the reason why we're doing this is for a serious health concern. Uh, there are 48,000 cases of COVID-19 in, in Los Angeles County. We're still uh, at 1,200 uh, new cases per day kind of threshold. Um, 30 people die every day. Um, so it's a serious uh, health concern that, uh, you know, with the public policy, uh, a maker struggling on how to balance the health with the economy. So at least now we're at the point where we know we've stayed uh, below the uh, kind of maximum capacity of the um, hospital. So that's been good news. And we're eager to kind of slowly work with uh, the different uh, entities to get our economy going again. So we um, want to make sure that uh, this is a two-way conversation. I'm here with a few people that are um, uh, on the Zoom uh, webinar with the city. And uh, I first want to go to uh, Rachel Janbeck with our health department. Uh, she's been working very hard uh, to uh, work through this whole crisis. And um, she's here to go through some of the uh, protocols that will need to be in place for those office spaces to reopen. Uh, there, uh, this is an initial conversation uh, and uh, only because it's so um, recent. Um, she'll also start sharing with you where you can find this information online uh, as we kind of uh, lean into at the end of uh, this conversation. So uh, for now, Rachel, if you wouldn't mind kicking off uh, your portion of this. Sure. Can every, Eric, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. So yeah, we're really excited to announce today that office spaces are allowed to reopen. This is very new. Um, and we worked tirelessly over the weekend to develop public health reopening protocols for office uh, work environments, and um, they are going to be posted on our website probably, you know, in, a, in the next hour or two so that you can print them and you can use them as a checklist in order to um, know what you like to create a plan in order to reopen your space. Um, one thing to know is that if you have employees that can do their job at home, the recommendation is that they do continue to work at home. But for those employees that need to come into the office or come into the work environment in order to complete their work, they are now able to do so. Uh, the protocols is a step-by-step -step plan that offices can implement and it, their best public health practices in order to reduce the spread of coronavirus in the work environment. And um, also it's a tool for you to um, show your employees that you're doing what you need to do in order to keep them safe. And also if you have a public counter, your customers as well. Uh, the protocols include uh, items that need to be done uh, by the business operator or the office manager um, regarding communication to the employees as well as to customers if that's applicable on what you're doing, what the requirements are as far as wearing face coverings and physically distancing workspaces and um, employees while they're work at, at the office. And also includes um, training for the employees on those items and record keeping. In addition, the public health protocols require that every office operator or office manager has a process for screening employees daily for symptoms of coronavirus and a plan as to what to do if the employee does become sick. And it's all laid out for you. So you can go ahead and read through it and check it off and make sure you understand. Of course, we're always available if you have questions. Um, one thing that the protocols recommend is that 
you do limit um, the number of employees in the office where you can. So for example, if you can stagger employees work shifts or have employees work from home certain days of the week and um, just cohort your employees so that certain employees always come into the office and see each other, but not the larger group, we recommend doing so. Uh, the reason is that if one of the employees does come to work and they are infectious and they have close contact with all the other employees, everybody in the office could end up being quarantined for a period of time and that reduces uh, your ability to operate. So we recommend grouping employees to prevent that. Um, we are requiring face coverings for all employees that work in common workspaces. But if your employees uh, work in an office where they can close the door or they work in a private cubicle, they're allowed to remove their face covering while they're sitting at their desk and then they just need to have it with them so that if they get up to use the restroom or take a break that they wear it while they're in the common areas of the business. Um, the protocols include recommendations for um, hand washing, frequency, and requirements that you provide a uh, hand sanitizer for your employees and also for customers if you have a customer counter. Additionally, there are general requirements like propping doors open where you're able to and it's not a violation of fire code adjusting the number of people that can ride in an elevator and placing signage that lets people know that they should give everyone six feet of space, for example, on escalators and while walking through hallways. There's even recommendations for um, making hallways and stairwells directional, meaning if you have two stairwells, one can be an up stairwell and one can be a down stairwell, for example. And if you have a hallway, uh, you can make it a one-way hallway if you have um, multiple exits. Uh, the protocols also include requirements for distancing employees. For example, if desks are very close together or workstations are close together, you can start looking at your layout and figuring out how you can reconfigure them so that employees have at least six feet of space between each other while they're working or um, barriers like plastic, for example, needs to be put up between the workstations if that's not possible. The same applies for customer areas if, if that applies to you. Finally, there are requirements for cleaning and sanitizing of the facility, and the protocol identifies those commonly touched surfaces that tend to um, gather germs that need to be disinfected on a regular basis. So it's, it's a checklist for you to use and um, a requirement that you implement a plan to have that completed on a regular basis. Um, at the very end, there's really important information regarding your building water safety. If your building's been closed throughout the last month or uh, the last couple months, then there is likely stagnant water in the pipes in your building, and they'll need to be flushed in order to prevent a Legionella outbreak in your building. And I provided a link to the CDC website on how to safely do that and information. Um, and, you know, that's it. I think, um, Eric, back to you. Thank you, Rachel. So uh, I want to make sure that uh, people have the opportunity to uh, uh, ask a question. You can do it two ways, through the kind of chat function, uh, through Zoom, or to raise your hand, and we'll try and go through those questions. Uh, we want to also uh, maybe a reminder that all comments that you make uh, are off the record, and anyone who's part of the media, uh, we just politely ask you to uh, remove yourself from um, the rest of this um, update that this is intended for office tenants and office uh, building managers. And um, we also want to uh, make a point of saying that star nine gets your hand raised as part of the, uh, the function uh, through the phone. And then uh, star six is to unmute yourself. And uh, we also want to make sure that uh, we uh, cover lots of different categories. So um, if uh, you, uh, Raise your hand, we'll um, invite you to pose the question verbally, and then we'll probably put you uh, back on mute uh, fairly quickly. So with that, uh, we want to open it up for questions. So um, while we're gathering questions from our live chat, uh, we did get one off the website that I want to share. Um, someone is asking, will offices be required to submit floor plans to anyone at the city for a re review prior to reopening? No. Um, so a lot of this is self-policing. So the protocols that uh, Rachel just described and the physical distancing um, is going to be the key. So we are not going to be reviewing floor plans. Um, but we do encourage you to uh, take a look at how uh, floor plans really do work um, and how spaces function so we can uh, maximize the distance between employees. So, but ultimately, none of that needs to be submitted to the city in advance. Uh, Rachel, is that correct? 
That's absolutely correct. The document that we've created is the basis of your, it, it's, it's the starting point for your plan and you'll go through and you'll check items off. Once you complete it, you'll distribute it to every employee so that they have a copy and you'll also display it somewhere in your business so it's easily visible and in a place where if you have customers or visitor, visitors, they can also see it. We won't ask you to submit your plan to us unless we receive complaints that um, you're, that, that there's something that's, that's not happening that should be happening at your business. And then we would ask for your plan in order to evaluate if you need to update it at all in order to meet the public health requirements. But initially you get to um, reopen as you self uh, complete the plan and you don't need to submit it. And I was just gonna add, if I may, Eric and Rachel, that um, the self-certification that is being discussed, that's the approach that the city's taking. We may get to a point where we develop an online portal where we do ask you to submit and upload your plan, um, but it's not gonna be a, you submit this and we're gonna review it and tell you if you're okay or not. It's just gonna be a, a, a database storage, if you will. So self-certification is the way that we're going, um, but we may uh, in the near future uh, try to develop a portal, but we'll communicate that with everybody in the city as we, as we move forward. Great, so we do have one dial-in uh, caller who has a question. Their phone number is 356-0328. Um, to ask your question, you're gonna have to unmute yourself, and to do that, you're gonna wanna press star six. And it looks like there's about 16 questions here in the chat for, uh, for Rachel. Okay, I've unmuted my, can I ask my questions? Yes, yes. Okay, so I have uh, three quick questions. The first is, can you give us the website address, uh, please, that uh, lays this all out, the specific website address? So it's the cityofpasadena.net, and you'll see a big button that says COVID-related uh, issues, and then it'll go to a business link. So It's green. It's a big green button. It's a big green button. Okay. So that, that's the kind of the quick way okay. to do it. Okay, great. Uh, the second question is, uh, uh, how does this square with the uh, County of Los Angeles uh, requirements, which are, uh, according to the governor's uh, uh, pronouncements that we've seen, uh, are the, you know, the sort of the ruling uh, order in the event of any conflicts between cities and the state? So we'll let Rachel describe that. Um, so Pasadena does have its own health department um, and there have been kind of a, a, a raging set of uh, kind of uh, um, issues that the city's had to deal with uh, having our own health department that are mostly positive. Um, and we uh, see this as something that we want to stay consistent with the county. Um, and I think on all the office related items that we're talking about today, Rachel, we are 100% consistent. And so maybe you can get into detail a bit more. That's correct. Uh, offices are allowed to open statewide. And so LA County and Pasadena are aligning with that state change. Um, there are a large number of the counties in California right now that have been able to meet very specific criteria that the state has set and then gotten permission from the state to move ahead of the state's reopening um, process, but here in Pasadena and in LA County, we're moving at the same rate as the state at this time. And so it aligns with LA County, this change to reopen offices, and it aligns with the state. Okay, uh, all right, my impression was that the, uh, that LA County <clears throat> was not, you know, that there were counties throughout the state that were uh, in moving at a different pace, but that Los Angeles County was more severe and that recently, and I realize that Pasadena has its own health department, but I thought I had seen recently where uh, Barbara Ferreira had said that the, um, we expected these orders to continue indefinitely and at least uh, through July. And so I'm, I just want to be sure that there's a uh, comparability between the county and the city in terms of this, even though the city has its own health department. Right now, we're we're aligned with LA County, and um, it's my understanding that LA County, although uh, Barbara Ferrer made that statement, um, and some level of order will be in place for months, but it will continue to be revised as we reopen cautiously. That LA County has been working very closely with the state this week, and my understanding as of this morning is that they will submit a request to the state 
to move ahead in the reopening process because they're confident at this time that they'll be approved. And so we anticipate that the reopening here in LA County and in Pasadena might uh, rapidly speed up in the next week or two. Thank you. All right, with that, we're gonna go to the next question. Sure, and just a reminder to everyone, if you would like to ask a question um, live, all you have to do is star nine to raise your hand and then star six to unmute when you're called upon. So one of the questions we received in our chat function is uh, from an anonymous attendee, if there's plexiglass barriers, do you still need to be six feet apart? Also, what size of plexiglass needs to be between people for reception desks and meeting desks? And are there any limitations on the number of people in an office at one time? Thank you. Those are really good questions. The plexiglass needs to be large enough to protect the employee and the customer. So I think that it depends on the counter size and it will vary from business to business. If you have a customer facing counter, the plexiglass should um, extend to the uh, the size of the counter uh, where customers anywhere where customers might stand in order to receive services, um, and and you can apply that logic in other scenarios. If, if you have um, two workstations or two desks that you're not able to reconfigure to space out, then the plexiglass could rise from the desktop up kind of the same way that a cubicle wall would in order to separate those employees with a physical barrier instead of space. Um, what was the rest of the question? Um, Sorry, so um, they asked about uh, if there were requirements between reception areas and when meeting with people for plexiglass and other uh, protocols. So as much as possible, we are encouraging that meetings between employees and meetings between office employees and visitors or customers are done over the phone or by webcam if, if, if you're able to, but we understand sometimes that's not possible. Um, a best practice is that people in a meeting should be six feet apart from each other. So that might be, you might have to remove every other seat or at every two seats um, and then spaced six feet away from each other, those that are facing each other. And they should all be wearing face coverings if they're having a meeting. In a private office where it might be one customer meeting with an employee, um, if they're not able to separate themselves, then a plexiglass barrier would need to be on the desk separating them while they're speaking to each other. Great, so Esteban Felix, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, there you go. Go ahead, sir. Esteban Felix with Insignia PMG. We're a property management company, commercial here in town. Um, I have a couple of questions. Have, have there been any guidelines from the city or from county in regards to um, opening up offices as far as what is required as far as distance uh, placards or, or stickers of any kind? And then more importantly, when it comes to elevators, are we restricting the amount of people in an elevator as they go up and down? So the material um, is kind of almost in print, or we're finalizing uh, updates to our websites right now. We wanted to push out this information uh, as quickly as possible. So you need to kind of give us maybe another day um, to get some of that on our website, but uh, I would start checking it as soon as possible. Uh, the elevator question is a good one. Um, I think. Uh, we're just kind of hoping that the distancing can take place, realizing that the elevators are rarely more than six feet wide, but uh, maybe there's something that you can post uh, encouraging people to uh, respect distancing. So um, signage at the elevator, opening up the uh, stairwells. Um, I know there are fire codes that relate to opening that, but uh, one way uh, up, if there's more than one stairwell, and maybe one way down is something that you might want to uh, take a look at. Uh, but ultimately, uh, that up and down access uh, in, in the building is going to be important in trying to keep people uh, as far away from each other as possible. Uh, Rachel, I know that we've started to write that stuff down as we speak. So any more details on that? Yeah, right now the protocols require the six feet of distance in the elevator. And so we're, you know, we're thinking that many elevators you'll be able to have, um, if they're just a standard size, maybe two people right at one time. 
Um, if there's a particular business that feels like this would be um, not a reasonable requirement, I would like to hear from you maybe separately, and then we can work through an alternate plan. Um, there, there might be another way to um, meet these safety requirements if you're not able to meet that. Thanks for the question. So we have another caller. Uh, their phone number is uh, three five six zero two three eight. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. Okay, uh, this is the the last question I have, which was uh, the uh, moratorium on uh, or potential moratorium on rent payments and so on was to exist for a period of six months um, subsequent to the removal of the um, declaration of emergency by the state. Um, when is that, is this process of reopening that you're announcing to today, um, does that remove the state of emergency or is that still something that has to come in the future? Uh, the state of emergency is still in place, um, so the, this partial opening does not impact that. Um, and uh, so that, we don't have a date on that yet. Uh, but ultimately, it's my understanding that once that emergency order has been uh, withdrawn, there is that six-month period where tenants are allowed to um, pay back rent. Again, the, the restrictions don't impact uh, or make any uh, claim on relieving rent. That's between the property owner and the tenant. But uh, the six months to repay that once the uh, emergency order is lifted is part of that uh, uh, ordinance. So that uh, is my understanding. Hopefully that helps. And Eric, as a second part to that question, uh, did the city provide any guidance um, or direction to commercial landlords to provide some rent relief to tenants? No. So uh, I know that's been part of the, some policy discussion, but there has been no action taken on uh, requiring any uh, rental uh, allowances or restrictions or um, forgiveness, so, you know, we've just stayed away from that. So that's still a conversation between the uh, property owner, uh, property manager, and the tenant. Great. I have a two-part question. Um, this person ask, is asking for a date specific of when people can return to the office. If you could maybe repeat that, Rachel. And then the second part of the question is, do we have a sense of when non-essential businesses will be permitted to occupy office buildings in Pasadena? So the date is uh, today, so uh, as far as starting. So um, that uh, is part of the response. And uh, Rachel, have you heard the second part of that question? Well, just to add to the first part, um, offices can reopen as soon as they complete the public health protocols and they distribute it to their employees, post it and implement them. So as quickly as you can do that, you can reoccupy your office space. But the law, the order has been revised to allow it. Um, and then the second part was when can essential businesses occupy office buildings, is that correct? Non-essential businesses, are they allowed to op return to offices? Yeah, that's part of this, that's part of what we're describing today. So I think that that is exactly what is allowed now. Uh, offices may reopen, even for non-essential businesses. Um, employees that can work from home should continue to work from home, but employees that need to go back to the office to work can now do so. Great. We have another question that's come through the chat. Uh, this is a person who's asking about a market research facility that conducts focus groups. Um, is there criteria that outlines the maximum number of people uh, socially distanced wearing masks that would be allowed in a same room? How, yeah. do you, how do you do that? So the answer is it depends on the size of the space because the requirement that every single person in that room has at least six feet of distance between them and the other individuals. And six feet is the minimum. You can make it more space. And so you will be limited. You're limited by the size of the space. The six feet is a requirement. Great. So we have a question uh, from Gordon Martin. Uh, he's asking, how long will this policy be in place? What is the exit strategy and what criteria will be used to cause it to end? 
So um, there's a series of phases uh, based on thresholds for kind of the, the health data that's coming in. So right now we're in phase two. There'll be a phase three of some sort um, that we can't identify a date. That's fully based on the number of cases, uh, the uh, death rate going down, um, the hospital capacity issues staying stable. Um, so there's a... Um, those are all health, health uh, guidelines that uh, Rachel can get into, but uh, we don't have a date on that yet. Any specifics, yeah. Rachel? I, I think that ultimately, if we're, if we're going to be, you know, realistic, we are going to be living at, at some level in a modified way until we either have a vaccine or herd immunity within the community. And, and I think that it's reasonable to say that that, that could be a year from now still. Great, so we have a caller, Esteban Felix uh, has another question. Yes, uh, what is the parking scenario for parking lots? Are we to have tenants park every other space? Are we, what, and what's that gonna do to the city requirement for offices, restaurants, et cetera, et cetera? So right now we're not anticipating any uh, separate requirement for parking for office use. Um, so hopefully people can just uh, um, be mindful of who they're parking next to and keeping that six foot distance um, and kind of waiting if people are parking uh, kind of adjacent and staying in their car appropriately, but there's no guideline um, specific to that. Um, separately from a restaurant standpoint, we're looking at ways uh, to maybe allow for some dining in the parking lot, um, realizing that restaurants are in a bind um, trying to separate up tables. So that's something that our planning uh, department uh, and Director David Ray is working on right now to kind of loosen up those uh, code requirements for uh, what are normal for uh, restaurant parking. So that that is separate from this office discussion. And again, in a manner of trying to make things a bit more flexible for the business. Great, we do have a hand raised. Uh, it's one of our, our dial-in callers, Jan Agayev. I may have butchered that name, but Jan. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, so yeah, this is Jan from Whitehorse. Uh, sorry to come in on something that's maybe not restaurant bar related but just wanted to pop in and ask that question because it's obviously a question all the restaurant tours are wondering. Do we have a date right now? Do we have an estimated date as far as dine-in or a limited capacity dine-in is going to be? We don't have a date. Um, we are hearing rumblings that things might just start to shift even uh, this weekend, but uh, we don't have anything to share on that yet. So uh, uh, we're kind of certainly leaning into this uh, phase two level uh, more quickly now. And uh, that is uh, between restaurants and everyone needs a haircut. So I think that's another kind of em emerging uh, priority for people. And that might be part of a weekend announcement. But right now, uh, uh, there's nothing official to share. Great. We have a, a good question coming in from our chat. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, they are an owner of, of an office building with multiple tenants. So they have shared areas, elevators, restrooms, etc. Do they need to compete, complete a checklist for the building as well as the individual tenants? Yeah, that uh, is uh, the hope that the, the building has uh, a set of protocols and is consistent with uh, what Rachel described and in each individual tenant's gonna do their own. So um, those uh, public spaces, we still wanna make sure that tables and congregate areas and lobbies where there are uh, couches and chairs that uh, you take a look at those, uh, spread those out, and that uh, each individual tenant's gonna have the same set of issues. Great, we have a couple questions about face masks. Um, people wanna know if, if they are spaced six feet or more, do they still need to wear face masks? And if people share an office, do they still have to waste, wear face masks as well as have a plexiglass barrier between them? Rachel, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, the, the way that the protocols are written, a face mask is required if you work with other people in, a, in an office space. The exceptions are if you are in a private office 
or if you are in a cubicle that has cubicle walls that separate your space from other spaces. And I think that the plexiglass example would be equivalent to the cubicle walls. So if you're sitting at your desk and you're surrounded by cubicle walls, or if you're sitting in your office and it's a single office and you're in there alone, then you're allowed to remove your face covering. So Rachel, there are some uh, new office styles that are more kind of co-working and people are sharing large long tables. Um, so there are um, formats uh, that are relatively common where you have people staggered on these tables, but they are five, six, seven feet apart. So uh, if they are seven feet, feet apart, you're saying that they don't have to wear a, a mask all day long, or do they still have to? They need to wear the mask uh, unless the unless they meet those specific requirements. And I understand it's not a modern office layout to have cubicle walls, but um, if there's an open layout and there are no cubicle walls or barriers, even if they're six feet of distance, the employees need to wear the face covering while they're in this space. Thank you. Great, so um, we have a couple of questions about air quality uh, management within buildings. Um, how can, people be assured that air quality in the office is acceptable. This is a tenant. The building management represents that they are working on air handling unit modifications to include inline purification and air filtration, amongst other things, but they are not in effect at this time. Will the city be inspecting the air quality filtration in these commercial buildings? And are there any regulations or suggestions for buildings with recycled air? Okay. Um, right now, the, the science is minimal, but it, it does show that the um, incorporation of fresh air into an enclosed space does help to dilute any viral particles that are in the air. And so we are recommending that as well. If there are any opportunities to open doors or windows and allow fresh air to circulate. Um, I have read some preliminary studies that point to um, enhancing air filtration. Um, and then I've also read studies that say that if um, an air conditioner is blowing directly on somebody who's ill and there's somebody sitting downwind of them, that the, it, the air conditioner can actually blow the virus from the ill person to the healthy person and infect them. So I can't comment um, specifically on the question. I think that there's a lot that we're still learning. But any filtration requirements or upgrades to the HVAC, they're not part of the protocols at this point. And it's it's a up. suggestion, so on the protocols, it's a suggestion to um, evaluate the ventilation and to make upgrades, but it's not a requirement. And the city, will they be inspecting? Is there a role for the city with that? No, there's not. We have a hand raised, it's Kevin Duffy. Kevin, go ahead. Mr. Duffy, go ahead with your question. Unmute you yourself. Star six to unmute. Star six. All right, you yeah, got me? Yeah, you're good now. Um, quick question as it relates to the building department. First, I, I want to compliment uh, the city because I've heard from several landlords that the uh, building department has done a very good job and has responded uh, in a timely fashion to f submittals. My understanding now is there's a drop-off uh, box or room where the plans are dropped off and then they're held for a period of time before being circulated to the building department. I, I guess my question is, with the anticipation that there will be a pent up demand either for TIs or uh, a lot of our landlords are looking at repositioning of their assets, so new lobbies, fitness centers, conference centers and so forth, is there a timetable for uh, the counter to the uh, planning department or building department counter to be opened up for in-person drop-off? So we have uh, the director of planning and community development uh, here with us, David Reyes. Uh, he and his staff have been working throughout this. It's an essential service and they've been busy and uh, happy to hear those uh, compliments. But uh, David, if you could respond to uh, Kevin's direct question. Yeah, th thank you, Eric, and uh, thank you for that question, sir. Uh, the Planning and Community Development Department has absolutely been very busy during this time. So it's it's been almost two months, uh, a little over two months maybe, um, since we've closed our doors to the public. But since that time, we've issued over 650 building permits. Um, we've conducted over 2,100 inspections. 
Um, we have, uh, in addition to these types of meetings that we're having now, our department is the only one in the city right now that's actually having commission meetings. So we have planning commission, we have design commission, we have hearing officer, we have HPC, which is Historic Preservation Commission, as well as Arts and Culture and then Code Enforcement Commission. We conduct those virtually. Um, we have most of our planners uh, working uh, telephonically from home, uh, telecommuting. Um, we do have, uh, I'm in the office every day along with our, our uh, chief building official, Clark Easton Syrian and, and his inspectors and some of the permit techs. So we've been extremely busy we do uh, hold on to the plans for a period of three days as recommended uh, by the health officer before we, um, before we move them along. Um, we've been pretty good, but I would say that there is a little bit of a lag time. We're setting up a couple of things that we're presenting to the uh, EdTech committee this week. One is um, an expedited process for TIs. Um, we want to help folks uh, sort of expand and, and uh, reorganize as needed given the current situation. We're going to have a special uh, expedited program for retail and restaurant and we're trying to create another one for commercial. Part of that will be that we don't want to ship things out. To the extent that um, someone is proposing a commercial TI with uh, major structural work, uh, we may actually uh, benefit from sending it out uh, to our outside consultant to help move things along. Um, I guess the actual question was, when are we going to open to the public to allow the public to come in? We've been serving the public. Uh, we think that we've been doing, doing it very well. Um, we meet actually with a lot of potential customers, uh, clients, patrons, um, residents, business owners, and general contractors via Zoom as well. Um, I think mid-June, we will start thinking about doing that for our public counter. But I, I don't want to get too far out of the story because uh, we want to sort of think about uh, the entire city hall. So there's going to be a city hall reopening, if you will. Uh, but we're doing a pretty good job of serving the public. Um, I know it's a little bit frustrating. I've actually been outside when people want to drop off plans and it doesn't quite feel right when you just drop them off and you leave and you, you hope that someone will, um, will call you back uh, timely. We think that we've actually implemented some good streamlining processes during this, pro during this period that can continue. One of the things that we've done now that we were unable to before is actually collect payments via telephone, credit card payments over the phone in a very efficient manner. Um, so there's some things that we're going to look to move forward on. And I would say that if you um, have a particular project and, and we may not be open to the public yet, please send me an email directly. My full name, David Reyes at cityofpasadena.net. Be happy to set up a meeting with you and, and uh, the building team and we can see how to get you forward. Thank you, David. So Anna Reagan has submitted a chat question, but she also has her hand raised. So Anna, if you could address both of your questions, um, unmute yourself, star six, star six. Great, hi Anna. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Um, can you please clarify the statement that we can, the offices are open and employees can return to the office, but that if you have employees who are working from home, they should continue to do so. Now, it's just confusing for me because we're just an office. It's like administrative. We do have people who are doing design, account management, that type thing. And it's confusing because we do probably have some employees who may not yet feel safe to return to the office setting. So I just want to make be totally clear that when we do talk to our staff, I want to be accurate that we are following county and state and city regulations. Um, what advice do you have when we do communicate with them? I just want to know what supersedes what. Sure. sure. Can I actually, can I, can I start, Eric? And I'll, I'll let the actual experts. And the reason that I say that, that I wanted to start is because I'm actually having this same issue with my employees. Um, and so what we've been talking about, and, and then Rachel can jump in and give the sort of detective answer, is that to the extent that you as a, a manager of a business or, or owner, if you are able to uh, have your employees at home and they're, they're working efficiently and they're working in the manner that you need them to work for your business, I think the recommendation is going to be to continue to do that for at least for this current time period for now until we say otherwise. And so that means that part of my team, like the planners, are able to do a lot of work from home. But folks that are more public-facing that need to be in the office 
at this point in time, what the guidelines say is that they can return to work. It doesn't say that they have to. It says that they can. And so to the extent that you are looking at what your business needs are as a business owner or manager, that's something that each individual business will be addressing differently with their employees. And maybe with that, I'll turn over to Rachel. Thank you, David. I think that was well said. You know, you, you, bring, you, you are given authority now to have your employees return to the office. But what we're asking is if you can evaluate some employees' um, work that can be done from home, that we're recommending that you consider letting them continue to work from home because we are still in the middle of a pandemic. And as much as possible, without, with, without um, any longer stifling your business, we, we do want people to stay at home when they can to protect themselves and to socially distance where possible. So bring everyone back that you can bring back. Make sure that you're able to operate your business effic efficiently and effectively. And if you can identify some employees that can continue to do their work from home, then our recommendation is that they do so. So Rachel, if um, employees are scared to return to work, how long uh, could an employer allow them to continue working from home? Um, our, our guidance doesn't address employee fear. I, I think that, um, I, I don't know how to answer that, I'm sorry. So perhaps um, for this current health order, what it says is it allows people to work from home um, if their job allows them to do that. So it's acceptable uh, for people to continue working from home, but it has to be at the discretion or in discussion with their employer. Actually, the health order doesn't say you can continue working from home. What it says is that you're now, now allowed to work inside the office. Great. So obviously, as you have some percentage of your staff still working from home, it allows for additional physical distancing in the office space. So that's something we're also trying to encourage. So do employers need to take temperatures of employees as they enter the office? We require that the employer does a daily symptom check of every employee, but taking a temperature is not required, although it, is, it would be a best practice. Um, if you don't have the equipment to do so, you don't have to. You can just ask the employee if they feel like they have a fever that day. Um, some employers are requiring that their employees take their own temperature at home right before they leave for, in the morning to go to work and then self-reporting what their temperature is. Um, but overall, the temperature taking is not a requirement. You can just go through a checklist of symptoms and say, do you feel like you have a fever? Do you have a sore throat right now? Do you feel chills, muscle aches? Are you having trouble breathing? And if they answer no to all the questions, that is an adequate health screening. So we have um, a question. This is a solo practitioner. She's a nutrition, um, he or she is a nutrition coach. Uh, they would like to see clients in their office one-on-one. -on -one. Um, are they allowed to do that if they maintain social distancing guidelines, as well as screen clients for symptoms? If they work in an office setting, they can go back to work, but they have to be able to maintain social distancing and put up and, and meet our protocols in every way in order to do their work. And so I, I think that the answer is, it is possible. Great, we have a caller, Esteban Felix. Go ahead and unmute yourself, star six. Hi, uh, two part question. Um, in regards to tenants, uh, on the property management side of our business, we manage about 175 tenants. Are we supposed to police each tenant business to make sure that they're keeping their distance According, according to the city requirements. That's question one. Question two is on the brokerage side, can we now commence tours of vacant spaces for uh, vacant suites? All right, thank you for your question. So again, how we see it is that each individual tenant uh, has to deal with their business and the property manager has to deal with all the common space. So um, we just, that's how we kind of split up the building. And from the brokerage standpoint, um, there's no restriction on those tours other than the uh, social distancing. So we um, know that it's an important part of conducting business. Uh, hopefully, um, you're all doing it with face masks and uh, staying uh, six feet apart. So that, um, 
right way so as far as tours um, those can uh, commence that that's correct great so we do have a question uh, from somebody that manages live work property sites are there any resources guidelines for reopening amenities such as fitness centers pools etc we're not there yet Rachel yeah so right now we're looking toward the state um, and watching closely to see when the state will reopen a fitness centers, gyms, uh, pools in Pasadena at uh, aquatic facilities are closed, but in, pa but in Pasadena, we never closed HOA pools or apartment pools. So if you're asking specifically about a residential pool and a multi-unit housing complex, it can be open if it's closed right now. Um, I can send you the protocol that we developed in order to safely operate that pool. There are restrictions. Um, the pool furniture needs to be reconfigured and a, there has to be a disinfection plan and we have to limit the number of users at one time, but the, the pool can be open. Thank you, Rachel. So we have, uh, let's see here, 14. 14 minutes to go. So um, we encourage you to kind of raise your hand or through the chat. Um, and even if you have comments to make, um, just uh, from a standpoint of challenges, uh, if it's not a question, uh, just to put that on the record, we're happy to see those as well. So just as a kind of heads up on where we are on time. Sure. So uh, for folks who don't ask questions today, you can go to the city's website and the website address is cityofpasadena.net forward slash COVID hyphen 19 forward slash. Um, and that is the website uh, that I've been adding to the chat uh, throughout today's uh, briefing. We do have two, two similar questions that came in. One is asking whether or not the city of Pasadena will be providing formal notification that non-essential office tenants are permitted to return to their offices, as well as a question about whether the city will have posters or signs available for offices to print and use at their office sites, uh, something with mask requirements, et cetera. So, yeah, but <laughs> I was going to say, uh, we're, we're making a few different effort, efforts to get the word out. Our website has the new order effective this morning posted. Um, and I know that we'll be doing a press relief and some social media outreach to get the word out about the changes. Today's changes don't just include uh, non-essential office workers being able to go back to work. It also includes on-site retail and um, an allowance for faith-based organizations to congregate, again, at a limited capacity. So we're announcing quite a few changes today, um, but we won't be reaching out individually to each operator. Um, I think that um, if you have questions, though, you can definitely reach out to me through the Citizen Service Center and ask them for now. And then about signage, we are uh, working on signage for restaurants. I can definitely ask to see if there's an opportunity to create signage for the other business types. Um, Eric or Michelle, do you have any information on that? I just want to add to your outreach. I mean, so we do have a newsletter that goes out to uh, 4,000 plus businesses. So we'll be uh, trying to let people know through that uh, mechanism as well. Um, but yeah, as far as collateral and the protocols, um, kind of hard copies and also things that could be assessed online, that will all be kind of going out the next uh, two, three days. And uh, we're eager to have your input on uh, what supplemental uh, material might be appropriate for your business. All right, we'll go to the next question. Great, we have Esteban has another question. Go ahead, Esteban. Yeah, I, I think it was answered. I was looking for a website or link so we can get the protocols so we can disperse them to tenants as well as put those guidelines in our properties. Esteban, if you want to um, submit your request through the chat, I will email you the direct link. Thank you. And again, we want to make sure that people uh, um, get on our newsletter distribution uh, list. So uh, on that uh, same website is a place for you to uh, throw in your email address so we can send you direct information. Yeah. And just so everyone knows, we, um, we are finalizing those protocols right now, like furiously going back and forth with our consultant. And I think that they'll be posted in an hour or two after this meeting. So. 
um, just check back at, at maybe two or three in the afternoon to the website link that was provided and you'll be able to print them. So Rachel, we have a question. Somebody's asking, will we be doing, we the city be doing any oversight or enforcement of the protocols? So we, um, we do get complaints for a variety of businesses as they reopen when um, customers or employees sometimes uh, submit to us and we'll go out. We always, um, our first step is always education and we'll talk to the operator and make sure that they have their protocols in place and evaluate what they're doing and if they're meeting all of them. And um, if they're not, then we, we explain what needs to be done and then we, we return to check that, they're, that they are. Um, so there is an enforcement process, but it's basically edu it's education based and it's responsive. So it's in response to receiving a complaint or concerns. Great. We have a, a two part question combining two chat questions. Uh, the first is um, they would like to confirm before employees go back to work, back to the office. Is it correct that an employer needs to have a plan created and distributed to the employees ahead of time? And is there an option for employees to do a self-assessment um, similar to what state guidance allows? Um, yes, go ahead. Yeah, so yes, the employer needs to have the plan in, in place before the employees can reoccupy the office. Um, and it needs to be implemented and it needs to be distributed to all the employees and it needs to be posted in the office space. And, and then your question about employees doing a self-assessment is that a health? Is that specifically for health screening? Then the answer is, we yeah. are. Sorry. We're deferring to the CDC guidance on how to do a health screening, and in the protocols that we've created, there's a link to that CDC guidance on how to do a health screening. When this information comes out, there'll be specifics on um, physical distancing, cleaning, uh, personal hygiene from an employee standpoint, kind of facility safety. Uh, expectations on how visitors will be handled uh, and various other kind of employee and tenant landlord issues. So that'll be part of a kind of a checklist. I know Los Angeles, I think also has their coming out like right now. And so that again, the little information is uh, just queuing up uh, today and uh, it'll be out soon. We have a, another caller, Anna Reagan again with a question. Hi, Anna. Hi, thank you. I do recall in the beginning, there was a statement said that we also need to train our employees. Can you please expand what you meant in terms of training them? Absolutely. And this information is all in the protocols right at the very beginning of the document. What we expect is that the employer train their employees on how to recognize uh, what the symptoms of COVID are and um, what COVID is, and we provide links to the CDC website so you don't have to come up with the information on your own. And then also how to properly wear and launder the cloth face masks. The employer is required to provide face coverings for the employees. We require that if it is not disposable, that the employee wash it every day that they use it. So they, they would not wear it two days in a row without washing it. And we have a document that we link to, that we provide all the information. So you just distribute that document to your staff. And there's a few other items. We require that the employer train the employees on what surfaces need to be sanitized and what the expectations are regarding the physical distancing. Thank you. Great. So we have a building owner um, who is interested in offering some of their building amenities, such as conference centers, uh, even fitness centers, to tenants during the phase two opening of office buildings. Is that acceptable uh, as long as the tenants maintain proper social distancing? Well, fitness centers are not allowed to open. The state has them closed, and we, we are not able to move ahead of the state in that. Um, so the fitness centers have to remain closed until we move to stage three. Um, regarding meeting rooms, we have to be careful and limit meetings to just um, those associated with the business, but gatherings are not allowed still any number of people. So there's a little bit of um, like confusion there. We, we can't just rent a, a meeting room for an event um, but if there is a meeting that has to happen that's work related and it, it's limited in the number of people that that's allowed. 
So, uh, Rachel, we have a, a few questions about PPE and uh, hand sanita uh, sanitizers. Uh, are employers required to provide face masks to their employees? And uh, does the city have a resource for getting um, quantities of acceptable hand sanitizers? Uh, yes, the employer is required to provide at no cost to the employee face coverings for them to wear while they're working. The employee is required to um, maintain the face covering in good condition and to launder it between uses and to wear it appropriately. Um, you know, I, I'm sure everyone has seen examples of people not wearing their face covering where it's properly covering their nose and their mouth, but, but that needs to be worn properly. Um, as far as sanitizer, I am seeing when I go out shopping now, more and more um, sanitizer on the shelves, but uh, I don't personally have a source for sanitizer. Um, I'm actually having a hard time sourcing it for my employees, but I did locate a local brewery or distillery here in Pasadena that was making it. I don't know if um, Eric or Michelle has any information on that. Yeah, they did uh, batch. I, before I get to say their name, I'm gonna maybe uh hold off and then see if they're still doing that or not. But yeah, there, there are a few uh, businesses that have adapted to uh, create additional hand sanitizer. But to answer the question, there's no kind of aggregate to kind of purchase uh, in Pasadena for uh, PP PPE or uh, hand sanitizer at this moment. But uh, we encourage other businesses to maybe uh, pursue that uh, in other uh, groupings, but nothing from City Hall. Okay, we have two callers uh, in about three minutes, so if you could um, make your question quick, that way we could get to both. The first is Stephanie Marquez. Please unmute yourself, star six. Hi, Stephanie. Stephanie, I can't hear you, so if you want to hit star six, unmute yourself. Let's go ahead and um, move to Esteban again. Esteban's got lots of questions. Esteban, go ahead. Trying to be busy. Um, just want to make sure that we're not required, I'm sorry, buildings are not required to provide hand sanitizer. If you manage a common space of the building and you're responsible for that area and people work in that area or customers visit that area, then hand sanitizer should be provided in that location. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and back to Stephanie Marquez, if you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself by pressing star six. Stephanie, go ahead. We're gonna give you, oh, here you yes. go. Hi. Um, Hi. I have a question. It was mentioned earlier, but I wanted to get clarification. We have an open seating floor plan. And I know I heard earlier if, you know, you have cubicles and or if it's a private office and you don't need to wear your mask, so is it required while well, somebody is here in an open floor plan six feet apart that they must wear a, a mask throughout their entire time in the office? That's a suggestion and the requirement, yes. Um, we, uh, that's in the protocol is if it's open area where people are seated on a computer or you know, within kind of a common uh, co-working type of uh, space that uh, face masks are, are required. Are required. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, we want to thank everyone for participating. We appreciate uh, you being in business here in Pasadena, number one, and uh, for sharing your uh, thoughts and questions. Uh, we want to make sure that we uh, maintain this uh, dialogue. Um, we uh, have the uh, online uh, space for questions that uh, Michelle just mentioned. And uh, we will be following up uh, in the future with other webinars, so please pay attention to uh, those. Uh, and uh, again, thank you very much, and we look forward to uh, your businesses going back online and uh, uh, employing people. And uh, please uh, go to local restaurants and uh, retailers as well. Those are all part of our local economy that uh, all kind of needs to work together. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time.